Welcome to ValueML AI Expo 2021 CXO Insights Track. We would like to first thank our sponsors, Platinum and Gold sponsors. Please use the Q&A chat box on Whova app to submit your questions, and please make sure to click on the live Q&A subsession at the bottom of this page to join the Q&A after this video recording. Our keynote speaker is Prasad Saripali. He is Vice President of ML and Artificial Intelligence at MindBody. Over to you, Prasad. Good morning. Welcome to Valley ML Expo. Today, we are going to discuss healthcare, wellness, how they're converging, and how AI, ML, and robotics are bringing revolutionary changes to these two very important human endeavors. Health is defined as lack of disease, an individual adequately coping with all the demands of their life and being in balance between themselves and the world, the physical, social, and emotional worlds. So those are three definitions of wellness or health. Health or healthcare has progressed quite a bit over the past century, but today there are significant challenges remaining. About 20% of United States economy is spent on healthcare expenditure. Almost a trillion dollars of it goes to fraud, waste, and abuse. About 75% of all deaths worldwide are attributed to chronic diseases, most of which can be delayed or even prevented by good fitness and wellness practices. United States spends more than $12,000 per person every year on healthcare expenditure, but the outcomes are not comparable when compared to similar economies, which deliver better healthcare at lesser cost. There is going to be a shortage of trained professionals, doctors in the world, certainly in the United States too. There are increasing number of chronic disease patients and mental health, psychological health ailments. Obesity among adults and children is also a big problem. As populations are aging worldwide, there is a lot of shortage for trained doctors and professionals in the healthcare industry. So given all these challenges, wellness is becoming more and more important. There are seven dimensions to wellness. Wellness is active pursuit of fitness, beauty, and integrative health along seven dimensions of wellness. For physical fitness, social and emotional wellness, spiritual, environmental, occupational wellness, how well one is doing in their job or their profession, intellectual wellness, which starts with literacy, for example, and financial wellness. So along all these dimensions, encouraging individuals and populations to achieve better wellness and fitness is going to have a direct positive impact on healthcare. Global economic output, about five and a half percent of it is spent on wellness and it is expected to increase even more. So the way wellness saves healthcare costs is by preventing avoidable diseases. Every dollar spent on wellness results in about $3.27 saving, cost saving in medical costs. Similarly, about two and a half dollars saving in 
professional productivity. Because 75% of diseases are chronic from a healthcare economy point of view, by preventing such diseases via wellness and fitness, healthcare industry itself will benefit because the costs and the pressure on the industry is going to be significantly lower. So that is why we are seeing a progressive shift in healthcare from reactive healthcare, from treating sickness to proactive wellness, preventive medicine, and AI, machine learning, robotics, and technology-driven care, telehealth, virtual wellness, wellness via connected communities, better mental health using technology. These are some of the trends which are accelerating healthcare and wellness convergence. So there are barriers to wellness though. Not many people are fully educated about the significant benefits of wellness to one's health. People say that stress, time constraints, and family commitments are some of the key barriers that prevent them from exercising and pursuing wellness fully. Fitness is an expensive endeavor these days. It is still available to a privileged few because joining fitness or yoga clubs and so forth, it is fairly expensive. Similarly, pursuing good nutrition has become challenging because of aggressive food industry marketing and food deserts where some communities, especially in the rural areas, backward areas, good nutritious food is not readily available. Motivation, winter weather, and mental health challenges all cause people, discourage people from pursuing fitness and wellness. So, whether we are talking about healthcare service provision or fitness and wellness, in either case, it is a service economy. That means there are providers of these healthcare and wellness services, doctors, gyms, salons, spas, and the services they provide follow a consumer journey experience. The consumer who is the patient or the user of wellness services, first they're unaware of the services, their benefit, then progressively they become aware due to good communications, including marketing, then they order the services, they reach out and get the service, then they can either be satisfied with the service and continue with the service, buy or procure additional services, or they'll just churn away and leave. So there are 11 touch points in the way a consumer experiences this journey. On the journey, there are seven types of AI, ML, and robotic services that are being built. And these are intended to either save money, time, cost, bring delight, something positive, amplify the advantage and the quality of that service, either that using AI, ML, and robotics, or cutting down pilferages, waste, fraud, abuse, inefficiency, delay, negative consequences like that, to arrest them, to cut them. We can achieve both of these using seven types of AI, ML, and robotic services. These are at the top on the slide there, insights engines, which look at what happened previously. If there are too many emergency room admissions at a particular community or within a hospital system, what happened in the past? Predict what's going to happen. 
then prescribe via recommended systems what needs to be done to arrest the trend and change it for the better. Build intelligent bots, concierge, chat bots, and so forth, intelligent virtual assistants to help give a good quality experience in that particular regard. Then robotic process automation for making the experience easier, the administrative costs lower, the administrative processes much smoother in healthcare and wellness also. There are many administrative functions, especially the providers need to provide booking, scheduling, goals, running calendars, running entire businesses, payroll, staff management, and so forth. Each of these is these days using the advantage of AI and ML for better efficiency at a lower cost. Then augmented reality and virtual reality, true robots, physical robots. So these are the seven types of AI and ML which can light up every single touch points along that consumer journey via insights engine, prediction engines, recommender systems, chatbots, and so forth. This is what is the excitement with AI, ML, and robotics in both industries. Healthcare industry is somewhat advanced between the two industries in terms of adoption of AI and ML. Healthcare industry itself is somewhat lagging behind compared to some other industries, but relatively speaking, this is already a third wave of robotic surgery, for example, in healthcare. Whereas in fitness and wellness, AI and ML are relatively recent. In both cases, personalization is important. That's what we are seeing here, Zimmerman's context model. No matter whether we are talking about a doctor or a patient or a nurse practitioner or a fitness instructor, who is the individual? What is their current activity? Where are they? What is the intent? And what is the time? Is it a pandemic time, Sunday afternoon or Monday morning? And how is this entity, this individual related to the other objects or entities from a computer science point of view? So following this model, it is advantageous to bring a personalized experience to bear on each of those touch points, each of those AI, ML, and robotic vehicles that we previously discussed, because personalization has the power to meet the intent of every stakeholder, whether it's insurance company, doctor, payer, provider, intent, meet it better, and also make the experience more enjoyable, and more value prone. Value-based care is a very important emerging concept in healthcare. Value is approximately equal to the benefit from a service divided by the cost of that service. With AI, we have the advantage to bring the costs lower in the denominator and the benefit, the experience, better and brighter in the numerator. So there are two different advantages that all add value in value-based healthcare or value-based fitness and wellness. Here are some of those advantages. Fast clinical decision-making, possibly better accuracies, automating such decision-making, augmenting, as in case of radiology, 24 seven availability and assisting the experts who cycles are typically uh, at a premium, not available because of shortage of doctors and nurses and so forth. Early diagnosis, prediction of outcomes of both the disease and the treatment as well. Reinforcing pharm pharmacological management, or rather non-pharmacological management, meaning no medicine, no invasive treatment, but uh, preventive, 
or augmented therapy approaches. So safety increases, protection against human errors and risk due to sepsis and so forth, therapeutic errors, diagnostic errors. So these are some of the many ways how machine learning, deep learning and AI are already helping healthcare industry. Now about augmented reality and virtual reality, these can be used for supporting healthcare and wellness also, fitness, beauty. These days there are startups which show a beauty treatment and its potential effect in an AR environment before it is actually delivered by beauticians. Medical training on complex operations without any risk to actual patients. Training about robotic surgery. Creating pacifying meditative environments for people with anxiety, depression, and phobia. During emergency treatment, showing which is where, the floor plans and all of that in a, an accurate virtual reality setting. So these are some of the many ways how AR and VR are already helping. Here is a summary of the adoption of robotics in healthcare. This is in China, almost 170,000 patients in 73 hospitals within a matter of six years used robotic surgery. It increased from about 2% to 15% from 2012 to 2018. These are some of the popular robots in healthcare in the world, the manufacturers, and then the functions, cleaning, nursing, pharmacy, laboratory services, food services, waste removal services, and so forth. So this is a pretty encouraging adoption early of robotic services in healthcare. The demand also is increasing. On the left-hand side, we see logistics, and process automation robots, which are 22 and a half billion US dollars by 2022. About half of that is additionally with the medical robotics. Defense and field robotics are much lower. So that gives us an idea of how well robotic adoption is progressing. It is being used in assistive robots with elderly children, patients, uh, who are in need of companionship, socialization and entertainment, coaching, physiotherapy, as we see here. About one fourth of US population has some kind of a physical limitation or other. And uh, stroke is an especially important problem. In settings like that, robots are already in operation helping people, assisting people with rehabilitation and physiotherapy. Here, optimization of such therapeutic practice exercises by feedback given by a robot to the individual patient. That's what we are seeing here. And a process is neurally controlled. That is advanced. That's what we are seeing here in this picture so that the patient would experience a prosthetic arm pretty much similar to a natural arm that they have. So here is a summary of specifications of various medical robots. You can note their weight anywhere from few tons of kilograms all the way to 1.2 tons in case of cyber knife, which is a whole radio surgery room environment. And they can be the advantage of these robots in healthcare and wellness too is they can be of any dimension, a small dimension for non-invasive surgery, attach a string or a tube all the way to an entire surgery room. So we have that facility. In fitness and wellness, you're seeing here early adoption of pedicure, manicure, massage by robot and hairdressing, salon and shampoo treatments by robots as well. So here in the Silicon Valley, there are some exciting startups building these kinds of robots 
for wellness and fitness. Here we see receptionists as robots, ambulance robots, drones used to deploy emergency help, medicine, blood, and so forth to where there is an accident. And these are nannies and nurses, nursing robots. In Japan, they're especially popular. They can even lift a patient and carry, the, carry them from one room to the other, filling medicines accurately in dispensaries, in pharmacies, being personal assistants, pretty much like a nurse. Today, robots are doing these functions. Telemedicine, at the bottom, you're seeing an economical, low-cost telemedicine device, which doctors use to remotely treat patients. These have become accelerated due to the pandemic. Today, telehealth and telemedicine has come to a great maturity, and it's here to stay. Similarly, delivering food, medicines, laboratory supplies, blood samples, and so forth across multiple floors in large hospital systems. This art has been really perfected, and there are many such healthcare robots in the world today. Similarly, for cleaning, restrooms and sanitation, radiation, and fumigation, robots do various functions like this, and this also has increased significantly during the recent pandemic. And finally, surgery using various surgical robots. This is called the third phase or third wave of medical robotic surgery. And it is in operation in several countries for heart surgery. A surgeon manipulating that middle unit is for the surgeon. And the one on the left side is the actual surgical arm. And uh, what happens is the surgeon operates, conducts the operation, assisting the robot and passing instructions from what looks like a game console, a video operative console. So surgeries for heart, general surgery, non-invasive surgery, especially spine, even cranial surgery, biopsy, there are specialized robots which have been developed for these purposes. And here we are seeing robotic chefs. This is for food delivery. Each of these themes or concepts, business cases are huge in healthcare and similarly in fitness and wellness as well. After surgery, when patients are discharged, sent to their homes, what kind of food will they get? how to deliver it to them. This is a major problem in many countries. So that's one example where robotic chefs and food preparation systems are really helpful. Similarly at hospitals as well, with cleanliness and affordable food as well. Drones are a major component of this robotic revolution, delivering various small and large payloads like blood or emergency medicines, so forth, to distressed population and accident sites. On the left-hand side, we're seeing an exoskeleton rehabilitation robot. That is, the person would wear it like a skeleton shell and they will get the assistance and the rehabilitation treatment that they need effectively. So that is a survey of the types of robotic systems which are becoming increasingly prevalent. But we need to also remember that the relatively mundane AI and ML enablements, classification, prediction, recommender systems, these are applicable at every touch point in the customer and trainer, coach, doctor experience both wellness and healthcare experiences to democratize these services, to make both healthcare 
and wellness much more affordable and much more accessible and much more globally uniform and standardized, safe and affordable for the global populations. This is what is feasible with wider adoption of AI and ML and robotics in these two industries. And the one additional pleasant outcome is that the more adoption of fitness and wellness there is in the world, correspondingly, the less pressure on healthcare resources will there be. And that would be a very desirable outcome for both industries. There are some challenges to adoption of AI and ML. Fairness and bias of algorithms is a big question. Ethical issues, integration issues, and how to update the software frequently, safety, and the fear of robots replacing humans. It's an economic and political question. Data security and privacy considerations. Just data exchange, the administrative process of exchange of data in both industries is pretty painful currently. So there are these barriers, but there is also very significant progress, especially in the past 15 to 20 years. So here is again a visual reminder for us that uh, the key role and opportunity AI, ML, and robotics have is to light up that patient or user consumer journey every step of the way, not just for the end user, but also for the provider, improving their businesses, their profit margins, and the administration and operations of the entire provider cycle, whether it is hospital, doctor, or fitness salon, spa, gym, and so forth. That is what is feasible with these seven types of AI, ML, and robotic engines. On that note, I take your leave. Thank you for this opportunity. If you have any questions, please let me know.